Hey guys, it's Chris. I hope you're all doing well. So apparently I'm not dead. I'm back after a very long absence and I would like to apologize for that, but well, real life got in the way. And now that I'm back, I'm gonna be making videos again. Maybe not as frequently as before, but they will still be coming out. So this video is probably not what most were wanting me to do, but it's actually pretty important that we do this now before we take the next steps both in the inventory and the crafting systems. We need to deal with some issues before we can implement item stacking. So the main issue here is that we are referencing the item assets on our project folders directly and here in the inventory that's okay, we really do need at some point to drag the item scriptable objects directly to one of our scripts, but when we get to the item slots we can see that they are still referencing the item assets in the project folders. We can see that by changing into debug mode so that we can see private variables. And if we click on the item field, you can see that it highlights the item in the project folders. But in reality, we wanted the item in the item slot to be a copy of the original item and not the actual original item itself. Because if it's not, if we add another chest armor to the inventory, it's still going to reference the same item asset, so that's basically like having the same item twice. While in practice, what we really wanted was for them to be two different and unique items. So if they're not, when we try to equip the last chest armor in the inventory, this is what's going to happen. It equipped the first, because as far as it's concerned, it's the exact same item, so it just picked the one that showed up first. But if we change our code to create copies of the original item asset, and by doing so, treating all items as separate unique copies as they should, then this is what's going to happen. So I've already updated the repository with these changes a few days ago, so I'm just going to walk you through what I did. In practice what we want to do is very simple, we just want to create copies of our items where we need them, so basically we want to instantiate just like we do for prefabs and other game objects. But in this case, we instantiate our scriptable objects instead of a prefab. The first thing we did is change the item class to have an ID variable. That's because even though we want to treat every item as its own separate thing, it's still very useful to have a way that we can tell that every single chest armor came from the original chest armor in the project folders. So for that, we use an ID field. Meaning, even though every single chest armor is its own object in memory, they're all still going to have the same ID. There's a private string ID variable that we marked with the serialize field attribute, so that we can serialize it and edit it in the inspector, and then we have a public property to be able to read it but not change it in code. Other than that, instead of having to go through the work of coming up with a unique ID for every single item that we create, I just let Unity do the heavy work for us by getting the globally unique identifier that it already generates for all of its assets and assigning our own item ID to that. In the item container interface, we also need to change some of our method signatures. Our item count method now looks for an item ID instead of an item reference, we added a new remove item function that also searches for an item ID and returns the reference to the actual item that we want to remove, and I just deleted the contains item method because we're just not using it right now and we can always add it later when we really need it. And after making the changes in the interface, we need to change the inventory to match. We add our new remove item method that searches for an item ID and it's very very similar to pretty much every other method that we have right now. We just loop through the item slots, check to see if there's an item in each slot, and if there is, we compare the item's ID to the ID that we are looking for. When we find the item that we want, we empty that slot, and in this case, we also need to return the item reference. In the case that we didn't find anything, we just return null. We change our item count method, to look for an ID instead of an item reference. And last but not least, probably the most important change in the inventory class, 
we change the set starting items method to instantiate copies of each item. To match our interface changes, we also need to change the crafting recipe class. In the cancraft method, we now get the item count by using an item ID instead of a reference. In the craft method, to remove the item, we need to use the new remove item method that looks for an item ID, and then we need to destroy the item that we removed. And when we add a new item, we need to instantiate a new copy. In the item chest script that we made in the first crafting system video, we also need to instantiate a new copy of the item that we want to add to the inventory. Lastly, there's a tiny bug that's been lingering around for a while in the drop method of the character script. We just need to return early from the function if the drag item slot is null, otherwise we're gonna get a null reference exception. That's all for this video, I hope to see you guys again next time.